Welcome to Worship uh, First Lutheran uh, live Zoom. You're being recorded, uh, just as an FYI, but that's important because once we are finished, we make this available through a YouTube video to uh, via email and on Facebook. So if people can't be here live, then they can uh, certainly still worship uh, with us uh, later on, uh, which I think about 15 people each week do watch this video. So what we have here plus in our 15. So it's uh, the, I guess it's the seventh Sunday after Easter, but it's also uh, Thursday was Ascension Day. So this is known as Ascension Sunday. And uh, the time when after the uh, death and resurrection of Christ, he then ascends uh, into heaven on this day. So we hear that story in the gospel. Uh, next week is Pentecost and uh, uh, some notes on that and during the sermon too. But uh, the greeter today is, uh, looks like that's uh, Ed Pluxy there. He has uh, got the, he made a nice sign there and we'll get to see his, his wife Beverly at the end uh, sending us off after worship. But an example of greeters, uh, doesn't have to be kids. Uh, well, Ed's a kid, I guess. Uh, he seems to act that way once in a while, I know. And uh, But it's great to show that it's not just for kids, that anyone can be a greeter. And that's all you got to do, make a sign and, and throw it up there. And we've got, we've already got the next two weeks booked up. Cole and Mavis got a week and Zoe's got a week in there. So if you want to be a greeter, you better get online to the church website and fill out the uh, greeter, or the, the volunteer sign up for that. Uh, so thanks for doing that, Ed and Beverly. Uh, Alt Park, I think, is where they went to get that picture taken. It's Memorial Day weekend, and uh, tomorrow, Monday, is when we remember, uh, memorialize those who have uh, given their life in service uh, to our country here in the United States. And so it's a time to recall uh, the sacrifice that uh, so many people have made uh, during times of conflict to protect our freedom so that we can gather freely uh, here. I've been watching the news in Hong Kong, having a connection there as uh, they're going to be uh, taking away even more freedoms uh, to people in that former British colony and it certainly is a, a poignant side-by-side -side reminder that what we do here, uh, we often take for granted. Uh, so thank you for making it a priority to come to worship. Uh, that's a freedom that we, we have, uh, and, and it's great that we can exercise that and come together. Uh, Chrissy McCabe pointed out already that uh, her grandfather, who died in World War II, is in the center picture up there. She's highlighting and pointing to who died during the war. Uh, she's one of many people, I'm sure, who can, uh, who have connections to people who served and, uh, uh, in, in our uh, armed services, military forces, uh, whether wounded, died, or, or served at all. Uh, Veterans Day, we recognize those who served. Memorial Days, in particular, we think of those who uh, are, did not return from service. So uh, we are mindful of that and give, express our thanks to uh, those families who lost and had to make that sacrifice. I'd like to, besides Memorial Day, we can remember and celebrate birthdays. And let's see who's on the screen here. We can point out, uh, let's see, it would be Georgia Neff, maybe, uh, June or May 18th. I don't know if Georgia's on or not, but uh, uh, yep, there's Georgia. Wave, Georgia. We missed your birthday last week. So happy birthday to George. Yay, she's waving away there. Everyone see Georgia. Scroll down. Everyone wave at Georgia. Hi, Georgia. Happy birthday. And then next would be Margaret. Margaret, there we go. Look at that. Dan popped her up there, the birthday girl. And uh, happy birthday, George. And uh, next one would be Margaret Schultz. Uh, she doesn't have video, but Margaret had, uh, she said her 94th birthday was May 21st, I believe, which was Thursday. So happy birthday to Margaret. And then that's followed up with uh, May 28th. This coming Thursday is my mother, Pat Ferguson's birthday out in California. Uh, she, I'm not going to give her age. That's not her son's job to do. But uh, happy birthday to mom this coming Thursday. And then Joanne Coder uh, is uh, Joanne Coder is uh, having a birthday on May 31st. And we want to uh, we want to highlight the fact that if you want to send her a card or something, it needs to get there by the 28th because they have a three day hold on items that would get delivered to her. So it has a chance to be made virus free, I guess, just time to let the virus die out. So if you want to send Joanne something, uh, do so by May 28th, but her birthday is May 31st. Uh, 86, I think is Joanne's birthday, 1930, yeah, 86th birthday for Joanne. Uh, so we got a picture of her coming up, but those are birthdays. And if I miss someone, I apologize for that. Uh, but it is uh, 
uh, good to remember people during, especially these times when isolation, when these milestones are being celebrated alone. Uh, about 20 people or 25 people have responded with interest in the Genesis Exodus study, five week study, one hour each, and it'll be on Zoom. And I'm gonna launch that. I'm gonna put these times out, I'll email it out by Thursday at 10.30 and 7.30. So two times to choose from. This Thursday, 7, 10.30 in the morning and 7.30 at night, there'll be an email sent out for those who have expressed interest. So you'll get a reminder on it. And it'll be one hour. And it's just a simple uh, study. The idea is to take a high fly through the familiar stories of these uh, first two books of the Bible. Uh, so it's, don't worry, you don't have to have, the point is I don't want, you can, you can have biblical knowledge, that's great. Uh, but the idea is that to create knowledge about the stories, the depth of these stories, like Noah and the creation and Adam and Eve and uh, Abraham. Uh, and Joseph, and uh, the plagues, and uh, Exodus, Moses, so that uh, you can enjoy uh, that together as a group, and also build your biblical literacy. So uh, one hour, five weeks, so I'll start this Thursday, and it'll be done by the end of June. Uh, also, there's talk, there's plans in, in a place to put together some geographic groups. There's about six different geographic areas that our active membership represents, and we're going to put you into groups uh, of people in your neighborhood. And that way you can have some Zoom groups who can connect. And that way, if you do feel comfortable going out or if there's a need, uh, like yesterday, I went and Rachel and I to the store and bought a microwave for Randy Mitchell and delivered that to him. He's not in our neighborhood, uh, but it's something I wanted to do anyway. But that's an example where if I knew someone had a need, I could contact someone uh, in that neighborhood group and they could coordinate uh, whatever the need was and respond. So that is happening. And then uh, uh, we might have a small group type of offering, whether it be for couples or singles uh, or something like that coming along as well. So different ways to connect beyond Sunday morning and the Facebook Live at noon. Uh, worship assistants today, uh, Ed and Beverly are greeters. And then also following that would be Gabrielle. Gabrielle, give a wave. She's the assisting minister today. There she is waving. And then I'd like to highlight Christina and Michael. Christina and Michael, uh, they're going to do the impressive feat of leading music today. Yep, you're going to sing and play the piano, and you're going to look like you're not even doing it at all. Well, it actually you will a second time. The first hymn is recorded. They recorded the music. Piano and song, crown him with many crowns. And so the music will be recorded and that uh, comes through nice and loud. And then, uh, uh, but then the second hymn, soon and very soon at the end, they're going to do live. I got that right, Christina and Michael? Yep, all right, all right, they're gonna do that live. So you'll have a side-by-side -side comparison and I'm looking for feedback on this today to see what you prefer, recorded music or live music. Uh, it'll help us decide what we wanna go for moving forward how we want to do music. We're hoping to enhance the experience. And so looking forward to hearing your thoughts on that. I think I'll be, I'll lead uh, uh, Lord, listen to your children praying if that's in here. I told, uh, I think I mentioned to Dan, I'd leave that myself. Uh, and I got, thank you for those who said I did an okay job last week. And uh, so I'll always be willing to jump in if we do not have musicians. That, and then finally, Dan and Randy, Dan, put yourself on there. Uh, Dan and Randy are uh, Dan Potosnik and Randy, they're there, they're both there together too. So uh, Dan and Randy just, Randy found out that she uh, is is uh, her last day of school or whatever work here in Cincinnati. It got moved to June. June 25th is the day that they're going to load up their moving truck and they're going to move to Portland uh, that week. So June 21st will be their last Sunday uh, together with us here in Cincinnati. Uh, so we'll have a blessing Sunday for them as they move out to Portland. But the good news is, is Dan is able and interested in staying on as our digital sacristan. So Dan uh, will still be uh, joining us and doing this role even after he moves. So we're not rid of you yet, Dan. Uh, uh, Randy, we'd like to keep you, but Dan, he can go. But uh, he's, he's still going to be with us on Sundays. But thank you for that. So uh, we'll have more to say about that as we get closer to that. So with that, I'd like to shift gears now and uh, take a moment, uh, prepare your hearts as we continue our time together with, uh, for worship.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Invite you to turn off your microphones or unmute everyone, Dan, I guess, or however you do that. Oh, here we go all together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world and in the end bring everything into your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I have spoken to you, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he let them out as far as Bethany and lifted up his hands. He blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into, the, into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, we just heard the reading uh, tell of how Jesus was with the disciples in Jerusalem, went outside, and then while he was in their midst, he blessed them, and while he was doing that, he was taken up into the heaven. He left them. He departed them. So the disciples have already gone through one instance of him departing them through death on the cross, and now a second time they have to see him leave. Uh, he was there. So you can imagine almost a second letdown, even though it's miraculous that he was resurrected, and so there's that comfort. But, but there still is a, a physical 
sense of loss there. Christ has left them. But there is a language, though. Don't worry. Don't fear. I'm going to send an advocate, as the Gospel of John tells us, and next Sunday on Pentecost we're here, the Holy Spirit will come. And the Holy Spirit will be with you and, and uh, the sense that uh, you will not be alone. Do not be afraid. I will be with you. And the Holy Spirit has a sense of being that presence, uh, a presence that's not restricted by any physical physicality or physical restrictions that our bodies would, would provide. But uh, on the other hand, though, it, it's not as, it's not tangible. Uh, how many of you have had conversations about, well, I feel the presence of the Spirit, or you have that experience, or you, you talk about the Spirit. It's, it's you're trying to describe what is the Holy Spirit, and it's not easy. It's hard to describe that, just like it's hard to describe uh, the omniscience of God, the omnipresence of God. God is everywhere. Uh, God is everywhere, but then you can stay up late, well into the night, for hours on end, talking about where God is and where God isn't, or God's everywhere, and you can get into arguments about that, and, and it it's, seems to go in big circles, and you don't get anywhere on that in your understanding of where God is. And it's hard to point and say, well, God's in, God's in a mountain. I see that, or God's in a sunset, or God's in a rainbow. Uh, God's in this or that. Uh, I experience God's presence in this way. But again, it's not definitive, and it seems to be unique for each person or individual. We can have our own sense and understanding of where God is. And so uh, with that, uh, we are given the gift of Holy Communion. Holy Communion is something that uh, God says, and Jesus, Jesus says that this is my body and this is my blood and I am present with you. And so with that, we have a sense and opportunity to be reassured that the Christ who has ascended uh, is present with us physically. Now with that though, I want to go in and acknowledge the reason I'm talking about this is because next Sunday, on Pentecost Sunday, we are going to have Holy Communion. We will celebrate the meal, the Last Supper. We will gather around the table, if you will, uh, and we will celebrate Holy Communion, that gift to us. Uh, and then we're going to do it again the next week, and I'll talk about why we're going to do it two weeks in a row on June 7th. When I put it in a letter that said we're going to June 7th, so if someone just wants to come for communion, they're going to show up June 7th. I don't want them to miss out on that and say, well, we did it a week early. Sorry. So, but there's a good point, though, I want to make on why two times, uh, back to back. Holy Communion, as I talk to people, and I know this, but talking to some of you and people who are not, you know, part of this faith community, there are many varied understandings of what communion is and that is in part because we live in a time when faith communities are made up of people from different denominational Christian traditions and backgrounds. So Catholics and Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians and Lutherans and different, different types of Lutherans all bring different experiences in life and understandings of what it means to have Holy Communion, what communion is all about. And so with that, it's I think significant and my responsibility, since this is the first time our faith community has done it this way, uh, it raises up some questions. So I want to do a little bit more teaching like I did last week and build on last week's message on helping us understand what the Lutheran tradition has to say about Holy Communion. And so with that, I want to think about this, is communion has traditions such as from simple to elaborate. So one communion tradition might be simply making, when you come up for offering or you come forward, uh, you might get a wafer, you go back to your pew, and then an usher comes and passes little communion cups through the aisle. And then you simply say a prayer, and then everyone drinks that and eats that, and then you put your empty cup in a holder in the back of the pew. And that's a very simplistic way of doing it, one of the most simple, uh, without long liturgies or robes or... Uh, incense or candles or whatever, or, or sung liturgies. And that's where we go to the more elaborate style of communion is where you have a big altar table that's in the center of the worship space that has a cloth on it and, and communion ware that is shiny, whether it's gold or silver. And then there's multiple worship assistants who are up at the table to help set that table. Uh, then there is a lengthy liturgy, uh, communion mass it would be called, where there is sung liturgy and spoken liturgy and, and the congregation, those who are there respond to that. And then 
when communion distribution happened, you'd come up and you'd gather at a railing and everyone would kneel down together and then the dis assistants would distribute that bread and wine. And then after the whole railed area was communed, you would be blessed and dismissed as a group. And then the next group would come up for another table serving. That's an example of a more elaborate communion style. Some of you come from the simple tradition, some come from the elaborate tradition, and some come from somewhere in between that tradition. Some of you find meaning in the simple tradition, some of you find meaning in the elaborate tradition, and some of you find meaning in the tradition you have experienced. I think it's important to name that your connection with communion is significantly formed by your experience. It's because you were raised and you have an association of what communion is that has meaning to it. And there are certainly different understandings that come along to it. So your desire to have a simple and elaborate one is a good thing if it has a connection to support and encourage your faith and understanding in Holy Communion. What's significant though I want from a Lutheran tradition is to make sure we understand what's the main thing. So it doesn't get lost in the style and the way we do communion, but that we do not lose sight of what is happening in communion, this gift from God a gift to us that reassures us that we have forgiveness of sin, which is also means life and salvation. That is what we receive in this, and it's a, a gift. And so let's not lose sight of that in the way that we prepare or experience the sacrament of Holy Communion. Ideas of how that I think open some eyes or understanding in the various ways of communion preparation, for example, or, or cleaning up of communion. I mentioned that last week is, for example, when the communion's over, a lot of churches have specific sinks in the sacristy that have a drain that goes into the ground. And so when communion's over, any wine or juice that's left over that had been consecrated during the meal is then dumped down the drain that goes into the ground. So it doesn't go into the city sewer. It's a special drain just for that purpose. Now that is a sign or a message. The reason behind that is to just show reverence for the sacredness of Christ, the wine that was consecrated and turned into the real presence of Christ's blood. And so that is significant to treat that wine in that reverential way. But on the other hand, though, if the wine were dumped down a drain that went into the city sewer, if that were to cause someone anxiety or uh, discouragement or despair, that in my understanding of communion or Lutheran tradition would be a problem because what that means is all of a sudden the focus is on how we dispose of the extra wine. And when you focus on that aspect of communion, you're no longer appreciating and understanding what the gift is about, right? So that's one example there. We don't want anything that happens with communion to be a source of anxiety, fear, or despair. If Holy communion is a gift from God through his son, Jesus Christ, the gift of his body and blood, the real presence. This is, present tense is, this is my body, this is my blood given for you. For the forgiveness of sin, which means life and salvation. It's that very reassurance. And anything else that we do around this sacrament takes away from that understanding. So if it's, it's if having a big communion mass with the reverential tableware and cloths and sun liturgy and prayers and spoken words, if that encourages your faith and enhances your understanding that communion is a gift for you from Jesus Christ and is so special and significant, then we should, you should do that and look for that. If that causes you to be anxious and worry about whether the cloths are on straight or crooked, or whether uh, the bread is lifted up and broken or not broken uh, during the words of institution, those types of things take away, they diminish your ability to appreciate what a special gift Christ is giving to you. So to keep it simple is what I want to lift up. Next Sunday, the first Sunday we have communion. To make this point, I want to make sure we have a simple communion. And then the next Sunday we'll do a full liturgy. 
that we're usually more, more full than I typically do, but we'll do a full liturgy on June 7th. But next Sunday will be simple. Dan, I'd like you to go to the next slide. And to make the point about what communion is, words of institution in the Bible. There's this slide, Matthew and Mark, and next slide, Luke and 1 Corinthians, Apostle Paul. Four times, these words show up there. They're not identical. So the words, when I say, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this remember to me. And after that, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant, my blood, which is given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this remember to me. Those words come from these four together to best communicate the message that's happening in here. What is the common theme? What's the most significant stuff going on there? These words communicate what communion is. It's a specific event that we try to, we're not reenacting it, but we are trying to experience it in the way that Christ first instituted it, the first time it happened. We want to experience it as closely as possible as what Christ did so that we can be reassured by that connection. So we want to have the words spoken, as I just said. We want to have, as close as we can, bread and wine. We don't always use wine because some people can't drink wine, so they use juice. But bread and, and then grape juice, because red wine would have been there, so grape juice is red, but white grape juice works just fine too. Point is to try and come as close as we can to that time. And what's significant is that in this, as Jesus at the dinner, that last supper, when he took the bread and wine, he, he would not have had everyone looking at their bulletins. If Jesus was talking, you're at dinner with Jesus, what do you do when you go to a nice dinner and someone at the head of the table is talking, you look at them. So you would, are encouraged to look at the one who is saying those words of institution because Jesus takes them and he says, this is given for you. If someone's going to give you a gift, you look them in the eyes and you put out your hands and say, this is fantastic, thank you, and you take that gift. It's a gift from one person to the other, and it's personal and relational. And so the communion does not happen if it's just the consecration of the elements. It has to be the completion and the follow-through, most significantly, of giving the gift to the recipient. The recipient receives, that'd be you, the bread and the wine. And when you receive the bread and the wine, if you receive a gift, you don't just leave it in the wrapping paper and let it sit on your counter and admire it. You open the gift and then you use the gift. That's how you honor the giver is you actually use the gift. And so if you receive the bread and the wine, you eat it and you eat it and you believe that it is the body and blood of Christ. And then with that, the benefit is like a gift, if you get a gift like a bicycle, you go out and ride the bicycle, you get the benefit of being outside. But this case, the bread and wine is a gift that gives you the promise of forgiveness of sin, which means life and salvation and the real presence of Christ. And then that is communion. That is communion right there. And that's what I want you to experience next Sunday in that very simple way. Because in that way, it unites all of our Christian backgrounds and traditions. Whether you like simple tradition of communion or you like an elaborate tradition of communion. This here boils it down and says, this is central, this is it. And if it's significant for you to add on more prayers and sung liturgy, that is good. If it's significant for you to keep it simple, that is good as well. Because the main thing is the main thing is this is a gift from God that proclaims good news, the gospel. What I don't want is I don't want this somehow to become related to the law. And the law would be, the message would be is that, well, we didn't do it the right way. Or someone took their leftover wine and they dumped it down their kitchen sink with the garbage disposal. That then becomes a law. Someone judging you or other people and saying something that somehow, how we treat that wine or bread afterwards, somehow diminishes the activity of God. We can't do it. The main thing is the main thing. Hear the good news, the gospel. This is my body. This is my blood. There are many other things we can talk about with communion that talk about community and coming together and the presence of one another in Christ, uh, all valuable. But again, the, for this first Sunday, I want the main thing, the main thing. So next week, 
on the 7th, we are going to have volunteers baking communion bread that we use for church and then be delivering that with cups and grape juice bottles. Uh, so you'll receive a communion kit and that's something that you'll be able to use if you want. Again, it doesn't have to be that bread and that's a point too. It doesn't have to be specially baked communion bread to have communion. The idea is it's a common element. Philip was going with the Ethiopian eunuch I talked about last week, south of Jerusalem through the desert, and he wanted to be baptized. And even in the desert, there was water. He said, let, let, let me be baptized there. The idea is these are common elements that are easily found. And so bread and wine fall in that category. I've got an example. I've got in my house, red wine and bread. This will work for communion. If you don't have red wine or juice or grape juice, what's common in Cincinnati? What's that? Skyline crackers. And I've got some tang. Tang and skyline crackers. You might laugh at that. It might seem offensive. It might be disrespectful. But the point Christ would make, I believe firmly, is that I want you to take, taste, and see, and smell something that is common for you something that everyone can get access to, and then that then serves as a reminder of my body and blood. We try and get as close as possible to bread and wine, but if not, you gather whatever you have in your house to be encouraged. That's the point. Christ wants you to know he's with you, that you are forgiven of your sin, and you have life and salvation. During this time, as we are separated and worshiping in this bizarre way, new way, this is invaluable, I think, because then we really do think Christ is at work in our lives, far beyond any way that we could connect with one another. Christ's presence in your home through Holy Communion, I think, will be a significant blessing for all who partake. I look forward to worshiping with you next week and celebrating the gift of Holy Communion. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that we can gather here uh, on Zoom and worship and see one another we especially look forward to next week when we can gather together and worship together, but also experience the real presence of your son, Jesus Christ, and receive the gift, the gift that our sins are forgiven and know that you are with us. And then in that we have life and salvation. May we find comfort in that gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in our statement of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, I the, believe Father in God Almighty, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. On earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before the prayers here, I wanted to uh, highlight these two photos here. Uh, the one on the left is a picture I took with Randy yesterday. Uh, Randy is doing well. You can, he can see he's, uh, he's, he was showing off. He said, what do you think? How do you think? How do I look, Pastor? He's been uh, working out. You can tell. He's, uh, he's buffing up there. So Randy is uh, uh, he's doing all right. And uh, we took him some uh, canned goods and a new microwave so he can cook in his home a bit better. Uh, so that's that. And on the right then is Joanne, Kathy Haynes. Uh, stopped by and saw her and was able to take that picture. And uh, Joanne looks, uh, she's looking good too as well. Uh, so it's good to see her. I've not seen her myself for quite some time. So it's, it's uh, good to see her familiar face. And again, her birthday is on the 31st. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places 
in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Living God, you cho chose us to be your witnesses in this world. We pray for the church in every place and the congregations in our community, including Warehouse, Philippus, Prince of Peace, St. Francis, St. Mary's, and House of Hope. Focus your hearts and minds on the ministry we share in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We seek your blessing, God, as many businesses reopen and employees return to work. Just as we fear the virus, we also fear the economic de devastation that threatens well-being of millions of people. Keep all who work and all who must go out free from the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you rule over all of creation. Bring peace where there is violence. Watch over this neighborhood during this time of change and anxiety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tender God, we wait with hope for your presence to heal us. Bless us, restore us, and give us peace. You know all the names of those suffering from whom we pray this day, especially Florence, Doug, Rachel, Bill, Anna, Gracie, and Cecilia, and others we name in our homes at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We boldly confidence in your love. Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. At this point in the service, uh, we would collect our offering, and uh, we do so now in this Zoom world with uh, QR codes. Uh, thank you for those who have continued to mail in offering gifts uh, or give online. It is appreciated, and it is making a difference. Uh, other ways to uh, uh, contribute would be, I mentioned, is through volunteering for worship, whether you're a greeter or a worship assistant like Gabrielle's been doing, or the Pattersons through music. Uh, you can sign up online through the website, uh, through the volunteer schedule that's posted there. Uh, specifically, next Sunday uh, would be Pentecost Sunday, and it's a tradition uh, we have done in the past. Pastor Larry Donner has coordinated uh, the reading of the uh, Pentecost text and acts in different languages. Uh, what we're going to do this year is to simplify that a little bit, is invite anyone who knows a foreign language. Uh, you can send me a message, what language it is, it doesn't matter, but uh, any language, and I will give you, say, the prayer of the day, or the Lord's Prayer, or the Apostles' Creed, and the, the text will all be in English still, but the voice we'll hear will be the voice of someone from a different language. So translations don't have to be perfect, because no one else is going to see it, and, and if you speak Portuguese, for example, you're the only one who's going to know if you're getting it right or not. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll all be able to join along in English, but we'll hear a different voice on the screen. So I'm hoping some of you out there, uh, I know, know some different languages. So uh, email me and we'll get you hooked up with uh, one of the readings for next Sunday. 
Uh, also, I think a message about uh, giving of time. Thank you for being here present in worship. Uh, being together in worship is a gift. It's a gift of your time. It's sunshiny out. I'll try and wrap up worship here in a bit because I want to get outside too. Uh, it's, it's Memorial Day weekend and that doesn't change whether you're on Zoom worship or if it's uh, gathering in the building, but it is, yeah, there's a thumbs up there from Jennifer. She wants to get outside too there. The uh, uh, idea is we want uh, to recognize though that this is a significant gift. Uh, it, it, for some, it might not be ideal, uh, but for others, this might be the only interaction that, of, of faces that people get to see uh, from their church family. And so to be able to see each other, to take time and scroll through the gallery of images and see people that you have not seen and you don't, you're not sure when you're going to see them again. And the sense that we are all together as one. So that for each one of us is a gift that we are able to give. When we talk about time and talents and treasure uh, in the church and stewardship, this is stewardship of time. Not only is it honoring the fourth commandment, uh, remember, the, or honor the, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, or the third commandment, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, uh, but it is also, uh, it's a gift to those you worship with. And so again, I, I appreciate that, and, but I want to include that. That is an offering. It's an offering to God of worship, but also an offering to your neighbor. And especially this time, uh, your presence, know that it does make a difference. So thank you for that. Uh, next slide, Dan, would be a uh, message, just a note on a reminder that the Thrive campaign, we made a $2,000 gift there to the Sunno House Synod. And how is that being used? Well, they are doing a good job of providing uh, Zoom meetings with the bishop and other experts uh, to meet with pastors. We just had one this last week on singing, for example. We had a whole hour together with a health expert to talk about live singing. And the message was, is that is not something we should do. And I'm hearing that from every corner of the world, is you should not get together and sing. That is a, a source of great danger in this uh, age of COVID-19. Uh, but it's good, though, to have the ability for our bishop to, to uh, coordinate and network and bring the leadership of our church together and encourage us. They can't tell us what to do, but they can strongly encourage us to uh, do certain things so that we can uh, be safe and healthy during this time. Uh, so that's an example of uh, Thrive and how we're supporting the Sun Ohio Synod, how they're helping and making a difference in the church uh, these days. So. With that, now I'd like to invite you to join with me as we read the offering prayer. Let us pray. Source of all blessings, we give thanks for what you have showered upon us. We pray for the tens of millions of people who are anxious about how they will provide for their daily bread. Show us ways to reach out and share the bounty you have given to us. In the name of your resurrected Son, we pray. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the, one, may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And Beverly is on there saying, giving us our sending to. Go back. We want to look at Beverly, that picture in the park there. Beverly saying, share the love, uh, which is share the love of God. But I like the phrase, zoom in on first. Uh, I don't know why you think of that first. So zoom in on first. And uh, so thank you, Beverly, for that. And a nice red First Lutheran t-shirt as well. Now, on this next slide, you have an opportunity to update uh, information through the QR code on the right-hand side and the offering QR codes there again. Uh, in a moment, uh, Dan will be sending us off to coffee breakout rooms. Uh, I encourage you to stick around for that, to say hi to a few people rather than the big group, and enjoy this uh, hopefully for a while sunny afternoon here on Memorial Day Sunday. So go in peace and share the love of God. Thanks be to God. <laughs>